uh, what is a vector so the basic definition for a vector is a dynamic array that means an array whose size can be changed at any point of x execution okay the, during the program execution you can change the size of the dynamic array or vector so vectors allow us to store multiple values of the same data type similar to an array but it can grow now it can be referred as dynamically growing array now how do you create a vector so this is how you create a vector you need to place let v and then you need to place the data type the data type is vec i32 for i32 data typed vector okay so you can place vec new this is one way of creating the vector that is using the vec new or else you can use the vec macro okay so you have two methods to create a vector the first method is using the vec new function that is by using vec colon colon new so that it creates a new uh, object instantiation of the object vec and then we specify the data type here that is vec i32 so that the vector should, shall only contain elements of the type y32 okay so if you if you try to push a data of a uh, data type float or string into the vec then it would generate an error now we have the other method this is one of the easiest method to create a vector is to uh, create like let v equal to vec uh, this is a macro this is a vec macro and then you can specify the elements inside this vec macro okay so that is one other method now uh, these vectors are by default created and then uh, you know you may not change its contents okay because this is actually set as immutable by default as we have discussed a variable or any kind of data structure that is initially created would be by default immutable so if you want to enter values into a vector then you will instantiate it as let mute v so that we can uh, push in values into the vector now there are two two uh, uh, operations that you can do into a vector that is push and pop push means you are inserting value pop means you are taking out values okay so i have created let mute v which is vector new so i have created a new instance of the vector and then i am using the push function so v dot push 5 so anything that is passed into the push function will be inserted into the vector okay so now i have passed 5 6 7 and 8 okay so my vector would be containing 5 6 7 8 in straight line now the second, uh, so yeah, how to access the elements from a vector. So these things are pretty well simple. Uh, you just try to understand this and then uh, go try out, do more examples so that you get a good idea. You can have a vector of structs. Okay, you can have a vector of any data type. So if you create a struct and you want a vector of structs, even that is possible. Just uh, in the place of i32, you need to place the struct name. Okay. Now, the second element is, yeah, I am trying to access the secondary, similar to accessing an element from an array using v1. v1 means access the index uh, one element, okay. So, here I think the index one should be 6 because uh, vectors also start from index 0. So, index one should be 6 and uh, this, would pr this would produce an output 6, okay. Now, what about you can access it using the get function also. Now the use case of get function, see why we would want to use the get function rather than using a normal uh, indexing method to access an element. Okay, so the get function actually works using the enum option. So if you try to pass a valid index, then it would give you a sum of x. So sum of x means it will give you a sum value. What if you are trying to pass an invalid index like minus 1? So minus 1, you cannot access an element of minus 1 index, right? Or else what if you have an empty vector and you are trying to access the third element? That is also impossible, right? So in these cases, when you use the v.get, you need to actually match the corresponding variable uh, or like match v.get so that if it, if it is a valid index, then it will return a sum of x. So we can print and then the third element is x or else we can actually create a none. So none means it is an invalid index. So if you are using the v.get function and you are actually 
assigning let third element equal to v dot get to two that means you are not getting the required value rather you might get a sum or you might get a none according to the index that has been specified so if it is a valid index then you would get a sum of x and to retrieve x from the sum of x you need to use a match statement so we'll match the value against sum of x and a none okay i think the idea is clear because uh, we have discussed about these things in the previous session so it should be easy okay so that is uh, all about the matching and uh, this is one of the uh, safest method to actually uh, try accessing an element from a vector okay now how to iterate iterate is like literally similar to how you would iterate uh, in uh, python like you can do for i in v you can just print i so these are the easiest and the most simplest operations you can do with vector this just simple as you can see we just need to create or instantiate a vector by using two methods we have two methods you can use a vec new or the vec macro and you can instantiate it as mutable so that you can add elements into it or remove elements from it and the push function is used to actually add element pop is used to pop element okay now you can access it using the normal array kind of accessing or a safer method that is the get function now you need to pass the index in the get function and you can if you are passing the get function then you need to use a match function in order to match the sum value and the none value okay so that we can get the right answer now the normal iteration or iterating or traversing through the vector would be simple that is for i in v you can just print it okay i think the idea is clear so try executing this program once so that uh, we can see all the outputs that we have discussed till now okay now Let's see right here. So there is no error. Okay. So let's let's go back so that we will see the outputs. Yeah. So initially we created a mute vec and then we tried to access with second element. The second element was six right because we passed five six seven eight and the second element is six. the third element the third element is seven that is the output that we get why because we tried to pass a valid index two what if i pass the tenth index what if i pass index 10 actually i do not even have 10 elements in my factor right now i'm going to execute it again i'm going to recombine and then execute Okay, what is my output now you can see the invalid index right rather than what we got here that is the third element is seven now we'll get invalid index now the last one was traversing traversing is just same you just need to use the for i in v so for every element in the vector just print the element that is what is happening here okay so that's all about vectors now you can read the values from a vector using a pointer okay now why are you using a pointer because you don't want to take the ownership if you don't want to take the ownership you can use a pointer but this is not a much important issue because even if you pass a particular element uh, into the println function it actually does not take the ownership the println function only takes the reference of any kind of value but when you actually move into a particular another variable okay you might want to take the reference because it might not have implemented the copy trait okay so you want to access it using the ampersand symbol now like you need to use an ampersand symbol before accessing the particular element so you are taking the reference to that particular element okay and yeah this was the more safe method that we used was the get function and with that you need to match the elements okay so an additional match statement needs to be written in order to create a more safe method to access an element from the, the vector so that's all about here so this is the vec macro and yeah so this is an immutable borrow as you can see we do not have an and mute so that means you can only read the value and you cannot change the value okay so what happens is 
when you actually take an immutable borrow to a particular variable let's say uh, i am going to access the first value and let first is equal to and v0 okay now we will discuss some of the theoretical concept so this is not very important if you are not interested into how these uh, data structures are implemented uh, in memory but yeah uh, this could give you more of an idea of how vectors work so basically vectors are different from arrays because arrays you know they actually require the uh, initial space at compile time so they have a fixed amount of size and they will fix it but that is not the case with vectors the initial setting of vector size would be like 4 and then if the size exceeds 4 it will try the uh, the compiler would try to find a particular memory which contains a size of 8 and now it will accommodate the uh, values and it will take a copy of the values from the previous memory location to the new memory location okay so now we will have a size of 8 initially we had a size of 4 now until and unless the size exceeds 8 it will be at this particular location so if we have a ninth element that is coming to the vector then it will uh, it will try to search for a particular uh, location with the size 16 and then it will start accommodating the vector that is uh, there is an overhead overhead means you will need to copy the elements from the previous location to the new location okay in case of a vector now this is the problem if you are trying to create a reference to the initial value and then you are increasing the vector size the vector is actually moved from the initial location to a new location in memory so that your first pointer is still pointing to the initial location right because pointers are address they are not actually pointing to the particular value they are actually pointing to the address where it has been stored but in case of vectors they will be moved out of that particular memory to some other memory while its size increases and that is why you uh, if you are taking an immutable borrow, then you might not actually want to change the vector. Okay. Now, this is what I have been discussing here. Take your time to read this if possible. So, the idea is how we actually copy values from one position to another. Okay. I think there is a copy in each slide. So, we'll discuss the iterating part. And yeah, you can create an and mute v for i in and mute v so what if what we are trying to do is we are trying to take a reference of this vector v and then we are trying to change its value using the star i plus now what is star i star i means dereferencing okay so that means a reference could be marked by an ampersand sign whereas a star means dereference so ampersand is the location of the particular value in memory whereas star is the value in memory okay so a star actually dereferences an address to its corresponding value so if you use a star you can actually change the value not the address